The Orbital Reef Space Station is one of the most exciting concepts we've seen in the modern day space race. It is a fantastic vision of the future where people are living and working in a gigantic and technologically advanced orbital platform hundreds of miles above the Earth. This is what the 21st century is supposed to look like. But two years on from the project announcement and reality is setting in for Blue Origin and their ambitions for space station construction. Now we are left to ask, was the dream of Orbital Reef too good to be true? This is the Space Race. The thing about Orbital Reef is that it is the best space station design we have ever seen, and by that I mean we obviously have to disregard any speculative fiction ideas like O'Neill Cylinders and Von Braun's Rotating Ring Station, and just focus on practical proposals for space stations that actually could be built with existing means. NASA was confident enough in Blue Origin's concept that they granted the company 130 million dollars to develop Orbital Reef with the expectation that it could be up and running as early as 2027, which would dovetail beautifully with the final decommissioning of the ISS. In theory, it was all worked out. Blue would partner with more established aerospace companies like Sierra Space and Boeing to round out the hardware and transportation needs for the station. Their sister company Amazon would handle the logistics and supply chain management, Amazon Web Services would provide all of the computing power and connectivity that the project could possibly require. The backbone of the Orbital Reef would be a trio of gigantic core modules, each one over 6 meters in diameter and around 12 meters in length, plus a docking node. There is no rocket currently in service that could handle a payload anywhere near that size, only Blue Origin's soon-to-come New Glenn would be able to do the job. The also soon to come Dream Chaser space plane from Sierra Space would handle crew transport and supply alongside the kind of working but still not really Boeing Starliner capsule. The inflatable life modules from Sierra would allow the team to very quickly grow the internal pressurized volume of the station to 830 cubic meters, establishing what Blue referred to as a mixed use business park in space where anyone could visit either as a tourist, a researcher, or a business trying to leverage the microgravity environment. And just like all projects in their conceptual phase, it sounded fantastic, in theory. Right now, we are exactly two years from the Orbital Reef announcement and one third of the way through the project timeline to get phase one operational, and Blue Origin have virtually nothing to show for it. In fact, the latest report that we've seen from CNBC claims that the partnership between Blue and Sierra Space has already started to fall apart. So what's going on here? Well, according to three anonymous sources who spoke to CNBC, the companies are looking at a potential end to the Orbital Reef project due to a general lack of progress on the station's design and construction, in addition to a restructuring of priorities at Blue Origin. In hindsight, there have been signs the Orbital Reef project was in trouble. The website for the project, created jointly by Blue and Sierra, hasn't published an update on the station's development in more than a year, and neither company has posted job openings that mention anything to do with Orbital Reef. Additionally, Sierra Space dropped references to Orbital Reef in its most recent press releases, focusing solely on its own inflatable habitat work. Now, Blue Origin refused to comment directly to CNBC about the anonymous claim, but shortly before the story was published, Blue made a post on X that says, We continue to make progress on our Commercial Destinations Space Act agreement with NASA and Blue Origin's vision of millions of people living and working in space to benefit Earth. Our team is currently testing window frames and materials in a relevant space environment. And they included a cool rendering of what the inside of a space station might look like. Now look, I'm not going to sit here and try to mock the complexity of building a window for a space station, especially windows as gigantic as those on the Orbital Reef concept art. That is obviously a very difficult engineering project. But at the same time, if this is the best post they could come up with to refute a news story claiming their space station is in trouble, that they've been testing some window frames, then Blue is not exactly exuding confidence right now. 
They've made a couple follow-up posts in the meantime, and it looks like their social media team has added periodic mentions of Orbital Reef to their content calendar, but these are just broad, generic statements like, Orbital Reef team is actively designing and testing several deliverables to NASA, and we're fully committed to working with NASA to ensure a continued human presence in low Earth orbit, so nothing of substance there. When NASA was asked for comment on the situation, their spokesperson Rebecca Wicks told CNBC the agency has so far paid Blue Origin $24 million of the total $130 million contract amount for completing specified milestones. So, looking again at the social media posts and how often they reference NASA, it's pretty clear that Blue's primary concern right now is making sure that NASA doesn't cut them off from the remaining $100 million of taxpayer money. I don't know, to me at least, it kind of reads like an office worker trying to look productive in front of their boss. One very obvious reason that Blue Origin may have lost interest in Orbital Reef is Blue Moon. After years of complaining and filing lawsuits, Blue Origin was finally selected to provide a moon lander for NASA's Artemis program. We know that Jeff Bezos is obsessed with landing on the moon, and after a failed attempt to secure the HLS contract for Artemis 3, the revised Blue Moon lander was given the green light to land on the moon with the Artemis 5 mission. This contract includes $3.4 billion in funding from NASA for the design and manufacturing of the Blue Moon vehicle. So you obviously can't blame the company for shifting priorities in this context. There is just so much more at stake with the moon landing project than the space station, not just in terms of money, although there is a lot of money involved, but also in trying to make the Artemis program a success, returning a human presence to the moon and ensuring that NASA remains competitive in their new space race against the Chinese. Blue Origin also recently announced that they have a brand new spacecraft platform in development called Blue Ring. The company is pitching this vehicle as a multi-orbit space mobility platform, and they expect Blue Ring to be used for transportation, refueling, data relay, and logistics, including an in-space cloud computing capability. They don't say this specifically, but it's very likely that Blue Ring will be a necessary support vehicle for Blue Moon, so this all ties together. And it even further illustrates that this company has shifted priorities far away from Orbital Reef. Let's shift the focus over to Sierra Space, because this is the most disappointing part of the story. While Blue Origin runs off to land on the moon, Sierra has essentially been left behind, which is frustrating because Sierra Space is the company that's actually been delivering results. On the same day that Blue Origin published their ex-post about window frames, Sierra released a two and a half minute video showing all of the work that has been going on with the Dream Chaser vehicle and the inflatable life module. And shortly after that, Sierra provided some photos to NASA spaceflight that show work being done on the Dream Chaser's shooting star cargo module, real photos and videos of real people working on real products, something that Blue Origin seems largely incapable of producing. As much as Orbital Reef would be a major accomplishment for Blue Origin, it would really be a significant platform for Sierra to deploy all of this cutting edge technology that they have been working hard on for years. Orbital Reef wouldn't even be possible as a concept without Sierra's contribution, so it does kind of feel like they're getting the short end of the stick. Though this does provide some hope for the future of the Orbital Reef concept, because Sierra Space doesn't necessarily need Blue Origin in order to build and operate an amazing space station. The Dream Chaser is very close to being operational. Their first completed ship, the Tenacity, could have even made its first mission to the ISS by now if it weren't for delays with the Vulcan rocket from ULA. Sierra needs this new booster to get Tenacity into orbit, but ULA has run into some pretty major setbacks, largely due to a structural flaw in the rocket's upper stage, but partially also due to Blue Origin's exploding BE-4 engine, so again, circumstances beyond Dream Chaser's control. But if the first flight with Tenacity is a success, and the vehicle makes it all the way back down to the surface after completing the mission, then it could only take a few years to get the vehicle crew rated. The SpaceX Dragon 2 was the first ever crew rated commercial vehicle, and that took around six years from the beginning of development at SpaceX, to the first launch with astronauts on board, so this can be done. The life modules are also very close to being ready for an orbital test, and unlike the orbital reef, 
the full-sized Life can be launched on any medium to heavy lift rocket, so Sierra could easily book a trip on Falcon 9 and get their first inflatable habitat into orbit as soon as it's ready to go. Beyond that, with the internal volume of a small house, the Life module doesn't really need to be berthed to a gigantic structure like Orbital Reef. One standalone Life really only needs to be connected to power, propulsion, and a docking port, and it essentially becomes its own space station. So we can at least look at one really good thing to come out of this whole ordeal. It's unlikely that Sierra would have been able to put in so much work and make so much progress on their inflatable habitat without being attached to a marquee project like Orbital Reef. As amazing as it would be to actually see Blue Origin's fantastic computer renderings brought to life on Orbital Reef, we're clearly not going to be there in 2027 or any time this decade. I'm not saying it couldn't happen someday, but we wouldn't recommend holding your breath in anticipation. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it, that really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.